everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to the Subpar Poddy C, officially... Unofficially! The best podcast on the internet. My name is Stumpy, I'm going to be My hosting is- this... F- Why? You have done? You did this last week, it's because not cute anymore. Because we've done this for a year. On Nine our months, TV ten months. show. Yes. This is not our TV show that we literally have. And on the podcast as well. You can't just <sighs> do that without warning me that you've got some dumb shit... Bloody what do you mean? Written. I'm saying my name is Stumpy and I'm going to be going through blah 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 and you are Cole and you're going to interrupt me. How's that? How's that for an intro? You even did a break. You even said my name is Stumpy. Because I and- took a breath. Yeah, right? Man needs to breathe. Stop then. Stop breathing. Yes, please, literally please. Jesus Christ, you are awful today. Go on then, do your intro. No, I've done it now. So <laughs> this, is, this is the Beyond the Summit uh, special episode of the Poddy C. Um, I've realised as well that we say why we do a podcast at the end, so nobody actually knows like why this is a thing. We're um, we're we we do this because of Patreon. Patreon um is it's it it gives us the chance to be able to do podcasts and bits of all, which I love doing. Cole, do you like doing mm-hmm. them? Yeah, they're all right. Cool, good stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you guys want to help us out on the Patreon, um, it's patreoncom slash HD. Right now, we are live uh, streaming this, streaming this podcast with our faces on video to Twitch as well. So go to the Twitch, and also it's on Spotify and iTunes. So if you if you're clicking on these, thinking, ah, oh, I need to like close the app down and like YouTube. I've not got YouTube Premium. And it's all like really annoying. Cole, do you have YouTube Premium? Because I don't. No, isn't it YouTube Red or is that the old thing? Is that the old guard? Oh, maybe. Is it YouTube Red? Fuck nice. We'll never know. That's the thing. We'll never bother knowing because nobody has it because that's a terrible way of doing it. The better way is yeah. to use Spotify or indeed mm-hmm. watch us live on, on Twitch. Yeah, but fuck iTunes. Um, <laughs> I tried to get on Google Play or the Google like store thing. Gee, they're so weirdly restrictive. Yeah, like they, they said, it's not available in the UK. But... Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can listen to podcasts in the UK on Google, but I don't really get it. Basically, I couldn't figure it out, so I just haven't done it. Um, so yeah, make sure you support us on Patreon if you want to hear more of these podcasts. Otherwise, should we get into the meat and two potatoes of it, Cool Carl? Yeah, mate. We're talking about BTS, aren't we? Which doesn't mean behind the scenes. It means beyond the All summit. the K-pop band. Are there, is there a K-pop band called BTS? They're like the. I think they're like the biggest band in the world. There's like nine of them. Pretty young Korean lads. Okay. And they just go about and just do K-pop based things. It's cool. What's, do you know any songs by them? Could you sing me a little rendish? I don't think I could. Our friend Shitty Watercolor is well into them. Like, loves them. He's made comics about them, hasn't he? About how he was he all nervous to go by himself because his friend couldn't turn up. But then yeah. as soon as he... No, no, that was, he was nervous to go. Then his friend was like, oh, I'll go with you. Yeah. And Hector was like, oh, yeah, I'll talk you through it. And then he ended up basically finding his people. And it was a really wholesome comic saying everyone was just there to enjoy the music. It's so they cute. Were chatting about BTS. Yeah, beautiful. Cool. I love it, BTS because it made Hector happy. Yeah, and we like Hector being happy. Um, we do. But we're not talking about that one. We're talking about the other BTS that made other people happy. Maybe Hector. <laughs> maybe Hector hates it. We don't know. Um, <laughs> no one so this was it. Beyond the Summit. It happened the weekend just gone over in LA. It's the first Beyond the Summit Rocket League event there's been. I think they've had like like a smash event and they've had like a couple of smash events maybe. They've had um, other games that have had... It's basically like a sofa... And they have a tournament going on, but there's also, like, random bits and bobs happening, too. So yeah. it's very matey-matey. So it's basically like Rocket League or any other, e- any other eSport meets the fighting game community where everybody is yes. poor and they're all friends and they've all yeah. been sort of building this up from the ground up and now they've made their first $1,000 from their game and they're all very excited. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, we do love the FGC. Um, <laughs> it's shit, innit? So... If we start at the top, um, the talent that they had for it, um, I should just preface it, I suppose. Cole, yep. how much <clears throat> did you watch? Because I personally couldn't watch the first two days because I was just out. I was away. I watched uh, the start of day one. Oh, right, look, look. I'm not going to go. Out I'm just no, 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 I know you're not. No, 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 I'm talking to the, the viewers here, not you, because I know okay. that you know, and I know that you know my reasoning. Basically, yeah. everyone, I'm sorry. 
I hated it. I thought <gasps> it was. I didn't hate it. I thought it was. Bo- I thought it was boring, and I knew it would be. I said before it on stream. I said on Facebook, this thing isn't going to be for me, and that's fine. It's not meant to be. But of course, I gave it a chance. I tried watching it, and there was a great game going on between, say, Frontline and Dignitas or whoever. Yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. This is like, this is going to be a great game. And then they're just sort of chatting with fucking Turbo about some bullshit, and like that's great. And I think that that content needs to exist but not during the game. It, it just, I, I'm the bad guy here, and I'm going to be a moody boy. But then later on, I saw um, the finals, and there was a little bit more of an eye <clears> towards <throat> the gameplay. Mm-hmm. They were discussing it a bit more. I had Johnny Boy sort of leading it, and I think he I think he sort of got the balance a little bit better. This is, bear in mind, for 50 grand, this tournament. Like, it's not yeah. small by any means. Um, there was, a, I saw a conversation on Reddit of somebody... Like, it was, well, somebody posted a thing based on like, sucking off BTS and said, oh yep. my god, it's the best thing ever. Yep. And to my surprise, the top comment was somebody saying, it wasn't for me. I thought XYZ wasn't super into it, right? Okay. And then there was somebody who replied to him with, like, more points than the parent comment saying, guys, stop downvoting him. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that guy got heavily downvoted. Ah. And then he's had a full turnaround and now he's risen to the top. He's become the creme de la creme of that post. I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with me. Everyone's thought, oh, cool, does he like it? Oh, fuck that guy. I'm going to DDoS him on Twitter. Oh, fuck him, he's ginger prick. Uh, and then they'll be like, oh, do you know what? It is fair. Because I don't think anyone who disliked it thought that they wouldn't i don't think anyone who is into that sort of content who's into the mm. more relaxed vibes will have watched it and thought oh actually this isn't as good as i thought it would be because it, it opened people's eyes to people's personalities it, you get a lo- load of behind the scenes sort of news and information you mm. learn how the pros interacted with each other which for people who haven't experienced that before is fascinating i'm surprised you didn't like it just straight up you I... didn't like it because yeah because i think there's Obviously, we are, we're the kind of people that will take a, typically, I think, Mm -hmm. a more relaxed approach to something to make people comfortable with it. Like, if there's, like, a cast going on or whatever, and there's an opportunity to be a bit lighter, we will then take that opportunity. And we won't, it's a whole thing of not being serious all the time. Because if you are, it's boring, right? Obviously, I know it's striking that balance. (laughs) But I, I was surprised when you said you straight up didn't like it. Do you think it's because... Like, you know what the personality of these pros are already, and say it wasn't anything new to you? I love the splendor, right? I love the 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 championing of these great players, and the mm. shouting, and the full-on, like, this is the best, the most, most amazing thing I've ever seen. I, I adore that. Yeah. Right? I love the show of it all. And I think that Beyond the Summit sort of stripped Rocket League of that. Um <sighs> I, I think it did strip it of the show a little bit, especially during some of these amazing matches that were going on. It was just people people chatting. Mm. Uh, I, I think that I completely agree and also like I, I, I firmly would push the idea that there is a time for comedy, there is a time for lightheartedness, mm-hmm. but I think that works best <clears throat> when it's within the juxtaposition of this sort of splendid occasion going on in the background and then you say something mundane and bollocks and suddenly it's really funny because you're up on this pedestal and the players are amazing but you're having a quick chat about chocolate bars for 30 seconds and you go back because the game is sort of, the game's popped to life a li- again. But then a does bit. that not make it a lot like every other event at that point wouldn't you say that it's sort of taking that serious side to it like this is the only event where i can think where it was much much lighter and Mm -hmm. it was celebrated obviously for that i think if you then make it if i get your point if you then make it so it's sort of serious 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 a little bit of comedy serious 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 Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that then makes it like every other rocket league event ever well, I wouldn't say that RLCS and, say, the Gfinity Elite Series, which is, to me, the perfect sort of balance of this all. Yeah, the buddy. Same. You know, RLCS, in the last couple of seasons, they've tried really hard to make it more lighthearted. They've brought mm-hmm. life to, more life to the casters, and they've done that incredibly well. For example, um, Gibbs, Gibbs' sketch at the start of RLCS Ugh. Season 6, Day 2, I think it was, when yeah, all the NA was, teams yeah. like they were struggling. That was quality. It opened us up on a light tone. That the, so the casters good. and the, um, the, the uh, desk talent were having a great time. Mm-hmm. But then when the game started, the games had started. I, I think it's between being in-game and being out of game. I think. Okay. I think. Well, I mean, you're not alone in that opinion. Okay. You're not alone in that. I did see some stuff on Reddit. I think once the sort of sucky offiness had died down on Reddit, yeah. um, people then felt like they could come out of the woodwork and say, <laughs> I didn't actually like it very much. And then that opinion was accepted more. 
I yeah. personally, for um, yeah, some contrast, on. I loved it. I Good. thought it was brilliant. I'm annoyed I'm that I missed the first two days. Yeah. And I didn't even really watch... Like, when I went back to watch the VODs and stuff, mm-hmm. I, I think I watched, like, half of one of the games. And then I've binged all of the Mafia stuff that went on. I've binged the, like, other, like, in-between sections of them chatting and then taking the piss and the sort of almost podcasty sections where they're leading into a section then there's a game going on. So I really, really enjoyed it. Um, Does that not prove my point, though? The fact that, to you, the Rocket League was... The Rocket League itself, the actual reason they were all there, fundamentally, yeah. was, was put to the... You know, was, was put behind. Surely you'd want it so that when players aren't playing Rocket League, mm-hmm. you can see them play Mafia, you can see them sort of show off how funny they are, how yeah. good friends they are with everybody. But then as soon as it starts, wouldn't you have thought... Wouldn't you imagine if you had okay. all that outside of Rocket League, okay. and then in Rocket League, the casting was the, the quality, the standard that you'd usually expect? It wasn't this. It wasn't because of the casting. It's just because I wasn't interested in watching the games. Like watching them, I found it much less entertaining than the other content that was on offer. Because it's not either or. Bear in mind, it's and. So it's mafia. It's Rob Overseas Tour and whatever else went mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. and the Rocket League. And because I didn't watch it, if I watched it live, I would have watched all of it. I would have watched okay, every. I, I would have watched yeah. every minute. But because I can go back and pick and choose, and I've not got ten hours in one day to dedicate to watching. Like just a stream, yes. Like then it means that I have to sort of be pick and choosy. So I went for the content that was different, stuff that I wouldn't see somewhere else. Like so that's, that's why I preferred that. And maybe if I went back and watched the games, I'd enjoy them again. Mm-hmm. Um, there were times, don't get me wrong, where I would have liked for the casting to be more serious. Um, yes. Um, where I think, especially towards the day three, um, it was still very light in games, and I'm thinking. This is for fifty grand, bear in no, no, mind. Right. Like exactly, you sort you did lose that context. Um, just to sort of um, some of the talent as well that they had there, um, the guys who were sort of repping all of this and being the front mm-hmm. men, and two people in particular that I want to praise to the high heavens with how well they did. Um, we had CJ, guess. CJ. Okay, go Can on. I guess the two. Can I guess the two? Go on. Uh, I think Johnny Boy and. CJ? Ding, ding, ding. Uh, <laughs> um, so CJ, CJ, Corelli, James Bot, Johnny Boy, Turtle, and Leaf. Now, I, my main shout out is going to go to CJ because mm-hmm. I don't know how much you watched. He, As far as I know, he has not hosted something previously. He's never done the catching, the throwing, the no, introducing sure. people. Man is a natural. <laughs> of course like, he is, mate. It's of course he is. Unbelievable how easily he slipped into that role. Like, the first part I saw of him being the host, because I think he's been on there when there was James hosting, when there was Johnny hosting. Then all of a sudden, they were on the other sofa, and CJ's in the host seat, and I was like, what happens here? <laughs> CJ's there, just chilling back a bit, and he just goes, hi, everybody, how you doing? Uh, welcome back. <laughs> like, oh, I'm already in love. <laughs> CJ. So I was so happy. He did a wonderful job of just making it like a really nice chill event where it's basically mates watching rocket league but again there's certain points where it could have been better in terms of the um uh uh hype and stuff and the sort of the getting the stakes um being brought to the forefront of people's minds it doesn't surprise me at all that cj was amazing because he is just a natural person in front of Mm -hmm. the camera um like he, he's someone that can make any vibe work i think if, mm-hmm. if you ask him a serious question he give you a really good in-depth answer mm-hmm. and if you just want to be funny he is naturally one of the most funny people i've ever yes. met he's his quality and i think I, I think though that that can exist in a slightly sorry to go back to my earlier point but that can also still exist in a slightly more serious realm like him mm-hmm. on the rlcs uh desk would do the same job that yumi does because Yumi brings a bit of lightheartedness, and Yumi changes it. He tweaks it. He suddenly gives a bit more bite to the RLCS, which can be a little bit nice at bit, times. And, yeah, and it can be a bit dry every now and then. It can then. at times. It definitely can at times. Um, so, yeah, I'm not surprised at all to hear that CJ was incredible. I knew he would be. I would be. I was also really impressed. I saw the, the finals between um, Frontline and NRG, mm-hmm. and I think Johnny Boy absolutely nailed that balance i think he was okay. excellent at knowing when to go into the game when to make a joke when to make things serious he was definitely sort of he was definitely sort of pulling things along and he seemed very natural in that vibe i, I think that 
to do an event like this and make it work, you have to have yeah. people that naturally can go in and out of that balance and know where the where the room is going. I mean, I Johnny's learned from the Elite series as well, right? Like we were saying how good that is for that sort of balance where mm -hmm. you have the fun bits and bobs, but then also these guys competing for 50 odd grand, which is a similar yeah. price pool to what it was obviously at the, at the Elite series. So I think Johnny's obviously had practice with that previously. Mm -hmm. CJ, like, he's just a natural. He is just such a natural performer. Um, he is the perfect person to have representing your esport and your community. If you think this is the man who is at the forefront of it, yeah. then there's similar people following him. And I'm so, so pleased that he got that chance. I mean, big, I don't know who was organizing the talent for it, but a big shout out to whoever it was that was doing talent recommendations yes. and got CJ over. Because that is a commitment. Like, flying mm -hmm. him from Australia and then getting him into LA to then do a weekend of casting is a really big commitment. But I hope this, I hope this gets him more. I hope he becomes a staple at Lands. I really do. Especially when he's brand new to it as well. It's not like he's mm -hmm. been to every RLCS and he's a he's a known quantity. Like um, whoever was in charge of this will have known, or whoever pushed it from within, mm -hmm. will have known that he is this beloved personality, and they'd have thought he's probably good. But it's still a risk. Like he might have oh, yeah. not got it. He might have gone there and just gone like, ah, oh, fucking hell, guys! Oh shit, I swore. Oh no, I've done it again. I'm shit at yeah, this, yeah. aren't I? You know, he could have been terrible. So it, they've still taken a risk and brought him in. And of course, of course, he's excelled. I want to say as well that I didn't. I didn't dislike it, right? I've been probably okay. been a little bit harsh for argument's sake. I didn't. I wasn't watching it thinking, "Oh, I really hate this." It was just this sort of, <laughs> sort of blended angrily, into like, the background. Argh. Yeah, it, it wasn't like that at all. Like I knew people were loving it. It sort of just blended yeah. into the background for me, mm -hmm. um, which to me, Rocket League shouldn't for me personally. Uh, okay. One thing I really loved was uh, the the VTs. They had all the guys oh, at the DVLA. My God. Bloody hilarious absolutely laugh out loud funny whoever scripted those quality of the performances from all the players and all the talent yeah. that got involved in those brilliant i love yeah. those and i've been saying for years rlcs needs things like that and i hope I that agree. whatever happens from this the fallout is that going forward in the rlcs season eight i think is coming up season eight i hope yeah. that is it season eight yeah i hope that in that <laughs> one that we have lots of vts featuring Farah. <laughs> oh my god i can't there's just Oh, it's when Ferry just walked up to the counter in the DMV and it's just his little face. And yeah, he knows. He knows he's got a bag of the baguette in he it. Knows, yeah, he, he knows, yeah, he He knows the joke that he's about to do. And he's just <laughs> got his little face there. He's so cheeky. Oh, I love him. Um, <laughs> he's like a I, Pokemon. I loved... Uh, did you see uh, Cloud9's uh, VT? I need to. The Squishy Muffins one. Oh, my God. That was like... <laughs> so, it was like... A, it's like an intervention where they, they say like um, okay Squishy how did you get your name and he just sort of sits there and just looks at the camera doesn't say anything <laughs> and it cuts to Gimmick and Torment and he's like yeah we asked him once but uh, he didn't answer and he just left the room and um, <laughs> then there's like a bit where they're sitting um, inside he comes in the room and, and Gimmick just goes look dude you need to stop and it just cuts to him just looking at muffins and just squishing them in his hands <laughs> and just like tearing them apart and it's like that acting from people who aren't devoid of personality because they're not <laughs> devoid is a strong word <laughs> exactly yeah they are they they aren't naturally the big loud entertainer like a cj cj or something no i got you i got you, I, got you. I really love how well the bts guys manage to get sort of the personality out of them and I imagine push them out of their comfort zone and the players to respond with some really, really strong content from it. I just thought it was brilliant. I Like, VTs, we've said it for however many seasons now that there just needs to be something showing off the personality of these players because we sort of know how good they can be. And now there's been an event that, an event, sorry, that has shown them off. And I think it, this should be a cornerstone. I think the difference with the VTs, and I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling through the Squishy one now. I can see Squishy <laughs> crushing two muffins Just and looking smiling. at muffins. <laughs> He's loving it. <laughs> but you can tell they've been written by a professional. They're written by either a yeah. comedian or someone who has comic timing. I think, you, they, I think that, to me, Beyond the Summit needed that guiding hand. It needed a Kasim mm -hmm. G to be the, the, the wild card, to really mm -hmm. make it weird and make it actually stand out to people who... I, I, like, I guess there was a curiosity of, oh, I wonder what gimmick is like on the sofa. But then eventually that sort of... It, a lot of it to me just seemed a bit small talky. You know, it just seemed like okay. they were chatting and not really putting on a show. If you put in... Again, I really wanted Kasim G there. Just to, okay. 
to just make it pop. And he, he has that ability to do that live. Someone like you would as well, Stumpy, without sucking you off too much. I think you'd have made it weirder in a good way. Okay. It just needs that, that at, at thread BTS. of a... Of a yeah, and call us off, please. just needs that thread. I thought you'd return <laughs> the favour, but fair enough. Um, it needs that thread of a sort of guiding hand to, to help it I think you'd do a good script behind the scenes. Yeah? What, for you? I'd make for you me, funny, yeah, off I? camera, in another building. But you'd do a good job at making me look funny. You, you text me and you say, Cole, quick, I need a joke. And I say, <laughs> add the C word to your next sentence. You text me back going, cheers, mate. You say it, everyone loves it. Oh, man, that's the dream. CJ's laughing. He gets it. <laughs> he does. He gets Yumi's it. Yumi's doing a shoey. Yumi's doing a massive shoey. That's the thing. Y- Yumi's got a Wellington <laughs> boot. And he's just having it from that. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, just I think the main thing that I took away from it was just the, the extrusion of personality from players where and credit to them and the writers because mm-hmm. they Absolutely. pushed themselves I imagine well, like during the dmv scene like you can almost tell that there was moments where players might have been a bit uncomfortable with it but they were being pushed by the others and their fellow <laughs> players were like saying no like come on do it it's gonna be really funny i think it's um i think it's violent panda when pharaoh's about to get out his baguette no, it's Astral. Astral, Astral is yeah. standing behind Pharaoh and is about to get his baguette. And you can see him almost corpsing, almost laughing. And he just manages to hold it together. He does a really tactical cough. Yeah, he's like that's looking, right. And he, he goes, coughs. he's like smiling. He just goes, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's to the side. It's so good. And um, yeah. Panda was also a surprisingly good actor in that. Where he just like, looks he at was. his set and he's like, oh, you got a new car. And. My God, Shaw Set's accent is maybe the thickest accent I've ever heard in my life. It's like, yeah, I really like it. <laughs> like, my God, man. Like, he's literally swallowing a baguette as he speaks. Yeah, like, oh, thank you. Oh, he's become fantastic. my favourite player, though, Shaw Set. I think he's become a lot of people's favourite player. I'm sure we'll move, actual... sure, move on to the actual Rocket League later. Um, mm. But yeah, I think as a, as a spoiler, he is my current favourite player, both to watch compete in and also mm-hmm. to watch stream. I love Sure, set streams. I know that's a, that's a that's a random name for me, streamer at Subhub in HD, to say is my favourite streamer. But I think Sure Set is my current favourite, and I'll I'll explain why a little bit later. Respect. Um, we don't, we don't have an order to this uh, doc really. Um, no, but we can it. we can yeah we can. Send me a text. I'll tell you how to feed that back in later. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll from do. my different room. Um. So yeah, <laughs> I thought also just sort of just to stay on the talent just a little bit longer that. It is a, it, this kind of event, I feel, is, normally we moan. Normally we moan about talent that is there. Or like, mm-hmm. not moan about the people specifically, obviously. But like, say, I think it would have been, I didn't think it reached its full, um, uh, its full potential Potench. with the people that were there. Like, mm-hmm. it was sort of maybe held back. Maybe it was a little bit, it was too safe. It was a little bit too whatever else. I think that, the format of BTS was so strong that the talent they had fit it so far to a T. Like, I loved what Leaf was doing. Leaf was playing like a, just basically, he, he was like an older brother, almost. <laughs> like, he sort of knew everything to do. He knew how to desk host. So he, like, was making the job easy, really easy for, like, Johnny and um, CJ mm-hmm. and stuff. He mm-hmm. knows how to be the loud one because he's a stage host. He knows how to sort of cast and sort of keep that fun but serious side to him and i think the bts is one of the events that i've been most impressed with a with a majority american lineup um okay normally i'm not a super fan of it because it can be a lot more dry and i don't know what's a good synonym for like boring, but not boring. Like, <laughs> like Sa- I think safe is the key word. It's, like it's, safe. It's very it's safe, safe humor. It's yeah. Rocket League. Re- it's Rocket League related jokes. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're only champ one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That sort not, of line. Yeah, that sort of level. Um, but I thought that I think it could ultimately be better if there was um more European talent in there. Not not yeah, saying that say. it's shit unless we're there because it sure. was incredibly good. But I think it's one of those things where it can be aided with more and more people from different areas. Um, but I thought the talent that was there, they did a fantastic job and they excelled in different parts. Like Turtle, for example, I was very, very, very impressed with him okay. playing Mafia, for example. 
<laughs> like, I think that's where he did his best work. Him on Mafia was so fun because he was just so accusatory that whenever whenever anybody like accused him, he was like, "What the hell? <laughs> like, why have you accused me?" But he's just accused like four people. But he played okay. that character really, really well. So that made me really like Turtle in that respect. Would you think that um, the sort of the mini games would work as VTs then? So during RCS, super serious. You're about to start the grand final, and they go, we'll get the grand final straight after this, like a CSGO would do. And then it cuts to a, a chopped up bit of of Dignitas against G2 in Mafia or something similar. Would you think that, that, that would work in a super serious format, or did no. it only work in BTS for you? I think, it, I think it could work. I think it could work like as a pre-show thing. Um, pre-show, okay. But like not on a day three. A day three, presumably it's a three-day event, like RCS. Mm-hmm. A day three has to be like a journey video like a player spotlight-esque thing of saying right this is like uh, in the grand final we have frontline uh let's mm-hmm. see how they got here and then it's like, like shots dropped. of them like walking about like your, your classic vt like your normal standard bits and bobs um but i think there's definitely a spot for bts style humor if there's a pre-show or a post-show type of thing i just don't think it can be sort of plonked in the middle of serious gameplay because that uh, like RCS suits it being quite serious when it comes down to the games. Another example is uh, countdown timers. You know, at, at what point do we mm-hmm. put in something completely silly there with the countdown at the bottom in the middle? You know, you can still have your ads in the corner. You can still have yeah. all that stuff, which I'm sure rakes in the the dollar. I think no. something mega silly would work there a lot better than just the oh, the 16 minute countdowns. Listening to um, listening to flying forever once about once again. <laughs> I can't deal with just countdowns. <laughs> Like, there needs to be content. Who's just there mm-hmm. staring at their screen? What makes it better is if there was a 15-minute countdown, but what they had going on was some actual stuff happening, like yes. an interview or something, like a pre rec Like, saying that was done two days ago of saying, say it was like Ferra, and mm-hmm. you're going into the first day, and you've got your countdown going. It's an interview because holy shit, Frontline are still in this and they can still win it, but this is their thoughts from two days ago. Did they, and there's a question in there saying, did you think, do you think you'll make it to the grand finals? And they're going, uh, if we play uh, some really good teams, do maybe, do do we? maybe do we can do we? <laughs> there. Um, yeah, I, I think there's just content that can happen during a countdown and then surely there's more eyes on the count, there's more eyes on the countdown, therefore eyes on the ads. CSGO had an interesting thing. I think it was Face It, um, where... Mm-hmm. Uh, when there was some technical issues, mm-hmm. makes it seem even more like it's face it if there's technical issues. <laughs> uh, there was like an hour or so where everything went down and they had to fix it. And instead of just having countdown after countdown and awkward um, desk small talk, which is yeah. always fun as well to watch because you know when it's happening. Everyone knows they're making awkward small talk. At this yeah, point. I quite and like watching. I like watching it for the cringe factor. It's like, tough in it. That it is was tough. just trying because you know in their ear they've got them yeah. saying, "Okay, we're having an issue with the lobby. Just keep going." Yeah. That could be two minutes. <laughs> that could be half an hour. You have literally no idea. That's no, horrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, CSGO, we had it where uh, James U... I always forget his surname. J- James Banks? No, no, it's like Bardolf. Bardolf. James, James Bardolf, Bardolf, yeah. Were you, were James you thinking of Bardolf. That boxer, Eubank. Is that James Eubank? Chris Eubank? Maybe. 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 And then yeah, and then Banks that. was in there, James Banks, and then it all got amalgamated. Yeah, anyway, James... What's the one I said? Bardolf. Bardolf. James Bardolf. <laughs> Barlow? No, that's Gary Barlow. It's Bardolf. Bardolf. Isn't it? It is Bardolf, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, right. Yeah, okay. James Bardolf and another one were... That were going <laughs> not going to bother with his name. After all the effort we put into James Bardolf, you're not even going to be shit about the other one. <laughs> they were going around um, at some, like, gun range in America, just we're trying out weapons and throwing grenades. Uh, no, I don't. They were going around throwing grenades <laughs> and trying out flamethrowers uh, and stuff. And that was fun. That was cool. That was a good but, VT. That was a good VT to have in the bank. In case It did uh, play a few times, though. Yeah, it did. They needed more. Like, well, that's because that times. delay was big. Yeah. Him and DDK delay. going around in America. Which one's Having that? a good time. But that was fun. Um... I think, yeah, it's just, if there's content with a countdown and ads, bish bash bosh, you have an ad break, but it's Mm. one that people are going to watch. Like, there's got to be a viewership drop when there's a, an ad break that comes on or a countdown or something. 
There's mm-hmm. got to be a viewership drop, like a noticeable one, where people go and see what else is on. You see it in like TV shows as well. Like there are reports saying we lost 25% of viewers in this ad break and only 10% of them came back or something. God, yeah, it's tough, isn't it? It's it's tricky. It's a, it's well, it's not tricky. It's a problem with an obvious fix, but that obvious fix does take time and money. That's the problem to the fix. So there's a there's a fix to the problem, and then there's a problem to the fix. Yeah, the, it should ultimately you're trying to keep people as entertained as possible over the course mm. of a six hour show. Make content. What like, did BTS have? There's not a lack of ideas. Did it have countdowns? I'm not sure. I only watched all the vod bits and bobs and mm. skipped through, so I'm not too sure. Something else that was cool is they made all those wallpapers. Did you see them? Of no. all the teams. They made Mad Max style wallpapers and made all the teams dress oh, up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did see those. I did that see those. That was fun. And they just took the piss out of them every time they came up. And we were just like pointing and laughing at people that were like, looked a bit uncomfortable in there. <laughs> like, Speed looked like the fucking gimp. Just like <laughs> on his knees in front of a lot with a little like Joker smile on. Cooksey had like a collar around his neck. And a lot looked like their master pimp. <laughs> So I, I love that. I do love that when these these sort of players are. That, that's that's the guiding hand thing again. Do you know what I mean, they they had yeah. a director telling them what to do, mm-hmm. uh, and they would look sheepish and awkward, and they did it, and that's that's why it's funny, rather than them just sitting about. I mean, I, again, I I just want to before we move on, I'm sure we're sort of reaching the end of our Beyond the Summit chat, at least with regards to the the show as opposed to the Rocket League itself. I want to make it clear that I do not hate it. I was well aware from the beginning, it's not for me. I said that in our Facebook chat, didn't I, Stumpy? I said, look, I don't think you I'm going to enjoy this thing. I'll give it a go, but I can't see myself getting too into it. I much prefer the, the bigger show of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy that everyone had a great time watching it. And I'm not going to say, oh, I hope we don't do another one because I didn't like it. That's completely fine. Uh, it's just, again, my final comment, just not for me, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Um, it does still shock me. I thought that would be right up your alley. Um, but fair enough. Fair enough. Um, you can join. You can join Reddit in that because they've probably switched <laughs> their opinion by now. They probably have. It's probably changed the hive mind. Okay. Next thing to move on to then is the Rocket League. So the teams that were there. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on the teams that um, attended. Obviously, there were some dramas with like TSM Triple going T. and then Triple yeah. Trouble going and whatever else. Um, so we had Vitality, Frontline, who are the former PSG lads. Dignitas, oh by the way, PSG are out of Rocket League. Um, Dignitas, NRG, Cloud9, G2, Rogue, and The Bricks. Um, should we touch on PSG being out of Rocket League real quick? Because that's what yes. happened in between podcasts. Yeah, let's. It scares me. It scares me that a team that had just won uh, DreamHack, a team that have <coughs> Fruity and Chaussette, the best streamer in Rocket League, rec- pre- representing their brand really, really well. Yep. You know, and, and they're still like, oh yeah, there's no money here. That's a very scary thing, in my opinion. I think, yeah. I think it's, I think it's scary. I don't like it. I don't like that that's happened. I think the fact that they have got content creators and major champions Mm -hmm. and they still didn't renew their contract, Mm -hmm. I don't know what else they could have done. I think it does put forward a point, which I've personally been pushing for a long time, of if you are a pro, stream Rocket League. Because yes. your org might drop you. You can do as much as you can. PSG, mm. they did the most they could. <coughs> Yet, out of those three, only, really, as far as I know, I don't know about short set streaming schedule at all, to be honest, so correct me if I'm wrong, but Fruity is the only one making a living wage from streaming. And he has secured his future with that. I know that Chaussette streams to hundreds of people in French. I don't know how often he does it, how many subs he has, anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, but he certainly has been pushing it. I think of the three of them, the only one that doesn't is is Ferrer. Ferrer's now said that he's going to way. start. Has he? Yeah, but uh, it's just... If you're a pro, stream. Yeah. Literally stream. Imagine if tomorrow your org drops you. And mm. even if you're not even considering that, you think, no, look, I've signed a contract for two years or whatever. Think, okay... Do I want fans and support? Will you get fans and support if they don't know who you are? No, mm-hmm. you won't. You will not get that. Or you will, but at a much, much slower rate. If you're out there and you're streaming, you're posting it to your social with your tens of thousand followers or tens of thousands or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It means that you will gain a following that will support you at events. It means that on the subreddit, there's going to be posts about you. It means that... 
at lands like a bts style thing where it's an invitational if they need teams to fill it in then they will ask you to be there it is so important for you to raise your profile and stream even if you don't talk and you don't have a webcam cook syrup just have your gameplay bare minimum the only excuse is if your internet can't handle it basically like we've both had that issue where yeah. your internet literally can't handle it but you can play rocket league at a stable connection i've lived in a place where i could do that here mm-hmm. before my internet cole's mm-hmm. done that at his current place i've done that at my parents where we had fiber there it, it that can be an issue but if you are able to you undoubtedly should be making content because this bubble can burst so quickly. Well, the fact that PSG are out of it implies that we're, we're nearer to that than we were two months ago. Put it like mm. that, at least in my mind. I completely agree, agree with you. And it's not just for their sake. I mean, somebody like uh, Fruity, who we've mentioned many times, mm. he's streaming currently right now for 475 people or so. He's right? my poster boy, by the way. He of is. This he argument. is brilliant. <laughs> He has been quality with uh, with streaming. I mean, Squishy does well as well. And the Americans are starting to us. Well, Justin was streaming the other day for like yeah. 900 people. Rizzo is so funny when he streams. I love yeah. watching him. He's a go-to, isn't he, Rizzo? Yeah. I was impressed with Justin, actually. He was quite chatty with the chat. He wasn't just responding to donations or anything like that. He was starting conversations. They were chatting about spiders or something. Was he playing uh, so Minecraft? Because was... I saw that no? this morning. No, straight up Rocket League. Although oh, I didn't this morning he was Minecraft playing Minecraft. Well. <laughs> Oh, cool. That's good as well. Yeah, that's good as yeah. well. It gives you a chance to play other games and enjoy those. Um, but what I was going to say was... You talk about the bubble potentially popping. Mm-hmm. The pro- Let me ask you a question then. Do you think that the pros have any sort of um, pressure on them to help it not pop? Could you say that by not streaming, uh, the pros who don't stream are not chipping in to keep the game alive as much as they can? Is, is that in any way their responsibility or is it entirely on Psyonix? I think that phrasing that you used um, of saying they're not chipping in to keep the game from dying... I think I think that's fully accurate. Okay. I I fully I do think that. Um, but is it their responsibility? I think it's joint, right? <clears throat> I think it's joint responsibility to. You want the game to live. You want mm-hmm. the game to be as good as it can be. If you're there and you're twiddling your thumbs because nobody's prank, nobody's scrimming for exactly. 10, 12 hours a day. Some people um, might play ranked for that time of day, but that's for fun, right? That's not because yeah. they're trying to get better at that point. Um. But then, if you are a pro, you're going to be playing ranked at some point. You're playing six mans. Oh my god, Panda playing six mans is some of my favourite content. Same with a lot. Panda and a lot playing six mans. I love it. A it's just so, so funny. fun. A lot is fucking hilarious. How Jesus is a lot Christ. part of Mouse the most boring Rocket League team of all time? By the way, like, I don't know. He is. How do, how do they make hoot. him boring? <laughs> he is a hoot. He is, he is a freaking hoot. <laughs> Did you um, see Lorna's thing when um, they cut to Team A Lot? So I don't think it was the Bricks. I think it was like Team A Lot because he was like a, a captain. And they cut to his comms. It was his and two other people. Is that when he like went... Oh, no, I didn't see that then. No, I saw something else with him. It was so funny. Like, they were just like going, we got this, we got this. And like, just going, oh, no. And just all, all the, basically all the stuff that you or I would do when playing. You know, shouting at the ball, going, oh, my God, oh, my God. If they get a cool goal, laughing yeah. at it and stuff like that. Um, okay. And Lorna cut to their comms for about two minutes. Eventually, Lola cut back to Lola. Oh, was this during the and brawl? The chat. Yeah, yeah uh, yes, Lola's thing. Uh, okay, um, yeah, yeah. And the chat, for about five minutes, was saying, we demand orange team comes back. <laughs> eventually, <laughs> eventually, Lola gave in and was like, all right, I'll do it then. But by then, the game had moved on and was all serious. It was like game five or seven. Yeah. So the comms were boring and the chat was like, oh, this isn't really as good as I thought it would be. <laughs> That's <laughs> we, quite funny. We've had our moment. But it was fucking hilarious. It's a shame that Rocket League comms are normally so dull, isn't it? Yeah, and there's not really anything going on but it also means yeah. that if there's not much going on with the game that they can be a little bit sillier i suppose because you're not having True. to relay important information all the time um i did see a bit where again just to see how fucking funny a lot was <laughs> um there was a bit where i think he was coaching the muffin men against baguette boys in like the okay. um, <laughs> show match and it was like squishy uh justin and Cronovi, i think it was and he just went in there and he was like shouting at them, trying to get them pumped. Like, come on, guys, we can do it. Let's go. Let's go. And he goes, okay, on three. One, two, three. Let's go. Nobody said anything. He goes, no. Okay. And just left. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so funny how like much the comedic timing that he had that I didn't know he had. Yeah. I imagine then that that has boosted his social profile and therefore has boosted his Twitch if then he's going to be streaming again. After this event, if pros aren't streaming, 
That is irresponsible for themselves. Straight up. Well, my friend, let me tell you something about a lot. Did you see... Uh, I'm sure you've seen his wonder prediction. Yes. Oh, my God. Have you seen how much it popped off on Reddit on Livestream Fail? No, I didn't, know. Because when, when I saw this clip, I saw it on Twitter, and yeah. I thought, ooh, I've got an idea. I'll post that to Livestream Fail and rake up that, uh, that karma. Obviously, yeah. someone had already beaten me to it about 12 Absolutely. hours earlier. Um, but it was on, like, 6,000 upvotes. Wow. Yeah. So... Okay, okay. I've had a rethink. I've genuinely had a rethink with, with my own personal views on BTS during this podcast. What, just now? I Yeah, during this conversation. Because I saw that clip and I thought it was brilliant. I saw the VT and I thought it was brilliant. Everything that someone has sent me, I thought, oh, this is quality. But when yeah. I watched the thing in full, I thought it was a bit dry, a bit dull, right? Okay. So I think for me personally, what I am, and again, I've genuinely had this epiphany just now, is I'm a highlights viewer. Of something like Beyond the Summit. A match of the day style viewer. Exactly. With RCS, I can sit and watch it for, you know, six hours. I, I, I don't always, but I, I have that in me to, mm-hmm. to enjoy it for that much time. I couldn't do that with Beyond the Summit. But I think it does lead, and I'll happily accept that it does lead to some fantastic clips that mm-hmm. are much more likely to go viral. Because a great Rocket League goal, you and I would suck it off, but by no means would it get to the top of um, live stream fail and have everyone go, oh, Rocket League, I forgot about that game, let's, let's play it, that does look fun. Or who's Here this a lot guy, I'll check him out and watch his streams or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that BTS is, is perfect to be post-packaged and shared around mm-hmm. the internet. I mean, the, the clip has got 171,000 views. On Twitter, um, is this, sorry? On uh, Reddit, I found it. Okay. Um, Rocket League Pro makes a five-head prediction while casting All-Stars game. Mm-hmm. And then everyone's just like, holy shit, this is amazing. And then people are like saying, wait, you can do this in Rocket League, basically. And then it's getting the interest in the game going again. Yeah. That's, okay, yeah, I, I should probably say, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, go check yes. out the clip. But basically a lot says... um. There's going to be a goal at 343, guaranteed, 343. And that's with like a minute to go. He even said um, it's going to be, then. he said it's going to be a crappy goal. Yes, he, said, he did, he did. He said, all right, there's going to be a crappy, I think it's at 337. He goes, it? there's going to be a crappy goal, 337. And everyone then is just <laughs> like, oh yeah, okay then. And then there's a triple commit at like yeah. 340. And, and suddenly everyone goes quiet. Justin <laughs> then just dribbles it towards the net and I was like, no. <laughs> No, <laughs> and it goes in dead on three thirty-seven. A crappy goal, and everyone just goes fucking nuts. So, so good. good, I loved it. That transcends Rocket League. It's about transcending Rocket yeah. League. Okay, that that's what I think. Getting BTS out of the does box. Well, mm. so I'm a. I guess I'm a ro- more of a Rocket League purist than I thought. You know, uh, but the people who are not into it, that's the mm-hmm. content that they'd. Yeah. Well, obviously not just the people who are not into Rocket League, but yeah. some, there'll be some people. Be, there's a Venn diagram. I'm on the left side. You're in the middle. Some people are on the right. Yeah. And uh, those 5,000 people that upvoted that clip on Reddit are probably on the right side of things. And they've loved it. So, boom. BTS. Let's bring it back. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> so quickly. Also, six days ago. So, I looked on the top of the week. Um, so, number eight spot was a lot uh, cool. And then number 14 was Ronicky. Doing that oh, yeah. conspiracy theory about yeah, yeah, yeah. that the Earth is a salad and it's being mm-hmm. grilled by the sun, uh-huh. um, and yeah, that's on uh, there as well. That's got six thousand upvotes. So again, wow. just content. Lawler getting yeah. that content from the brawl. Good on him. BTS on him. getting the content um, from a lot. It's yeah, it's one of those things where if we can get viral clips going out, like how this is Rocket League was on ESPN and they got yes. millions and millions. It is the defining Rocket League play. And it got millions and millions of views. And then people suddenly start looking at it again. Um, same with Squishy's goal. There was a clip we, I watched on stream the other day of people, of um, Shroud, because he was part of Cloud9 at the time, oh, yeah, from the Squishy course. ceiling shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was then Shroud saying to his 100,000 viewers, look, in the Rocket League world, blah, 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 this happened, underneath the ball, I couldn't do that in a thousand years. Mm-hmm. And I just explaining it. Then everyone in chat was really interested. So it's trying to get outside of that Rocket League already loving bubble and into a group of people that are into gaming or into sports and they are able to appreciate it. I'm glad I've had that. Uh, this... That's a good epiph. I'm glad. I've... Yeah, it is a lovely epiph because I, I was sort of feeling a little bit left out, you know, because of just the way I genuinely thought about all mm. this. Whereas now I've sort of figured out how I can look forward to the next one. I can just sit back and wait for the people to whack it on Reddit, whack it on Twitter, and just soak up 
soak up those good vibes. That's basically what I was doing. If anybody else is listening to this and they were sort of feeling the same way I was, um, try and be a sort of passive viewer for it. It's nice. Oh, this is lovely. Thank you, Stumpy. Oh, you've done it. You're welcome, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a genius. Um, <laughs> so let's move into the Rocket League that happened. Yeah. Um, so it Which was, we said we half an hour ago, by the way. Yeah, now we're on 45 minutes of recording. <laughs> We've just spoken about how good C Gen are. <laughs> also, sorry, fuck the Rocket League. Fruity <laughs> on the sofa was so funny. There was a point where, like, it was G2 versus Frontline. Okay. And um, Rizzo was, like, standing there, like, do- I was sitting on the chair, like, doing the interview. Um, and <laughs> Fruity comes in, genuinely four times the size of Rizzo. <laughs> and, like,. Just comes and just puts his hand that's the size of his torso <laughs> on his shoulder. And then, like, he's, like, leaning in and talking. His head is, like, twice the size of Rizzo's. <laughs> and then, I can't remember who it was, one of the guys then said, um, uh, I'm really intrigued, could you pick up Rizzo, like, on the chair with one arm? And Fruity goes, I don't know. And just goes over and goes to pick it up. <laughs> and then they go, no, 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 don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Just in case. And he was like, oh, I could have done. And just walked away. <laughs> It was so funny. He was like Andre the Giant, just wandering uh, about his village. Fruity is like a genius. I love Fruity. Because he is he has got such a unique build, not just in Rocket League, but in the world. In humanity. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He is a unique specimen. He is the, the one true absolute unit. I love him. He's just so funny. I there are so him. many good personalities in this community. Just yeah. need that guiding hand and somebody to clip it on the other side and send it to me. And I'm all in. <laughs> okay, so the Rocket League they did end up going on, by the way. <laughs> Justin won, didn't he? Just yeah, fucking NLG. Yeah, they just won it. All they needed was a European to help. Ah, just so, like BTS. Yeah, exactly. So NR NLG, they um yeah, so there's one European NA. You're welcome um mm-hmm. for getting that. But they had so I didn't I didn't see day one or two, so I saw none of the group stages. Right. Um. Looking through, so it's uh, two groups of four teams. Uh, group A was G2, NRG, Dignitas, Vitality. Group mm-hmm. B was Cloud9, Frontline. Well, that's nice. Cloud9, Frontline. <laughs> uh, Rogue, The Bricks. That's not as nice. Um, and Vitality, shit the bed. They won a single game. And then they were out. They got one game against Dignitas, and then 4 won them. And NRG beat them 4-0, but with triple overtimes, and then one goal difference in game number uh, four. Yeah, okay, that doesn't surprise me too much. I mean, like, um, of these are the sort of top four from each side. So there's going to be... Yeah. I don't think anyone was ever going to dominate. It could have been anybody that only won one game. It just happened to be Vitality. I think this is yeah. your classic, you know, esports, anyone can be anyone event. I mean, G2, they smashed the group 2-0 after mm-hmm. beating NRG and Dignitas. And then in the playoffs, they got beaten 4-3 by Frontline and then got beaten 4-1 by Dignitas. They were just out. No oh, rip. So that's, that's harsh. Shame. Yeah. Because G2, I'm really, I really like G2. I really like them. I'm a fan. Okay. Um, of I, their personality or play style? I just or, like or the what people. About G2? Okay. I just like the people. They seem quite nice. I really like, oh, another person I want to suck off, Jarzo, right? Jarzo, their coach um, for G2, he, mm-hmm. when he was playing Mafia and when he was on the sofa, especially, I thought he was one of the best analysts that has been there. He okay. was absolutely unbelievable. He was so interesting to listen to because he had such a unique perspective on everything that happened in the games. He was a really, really good analyst. He phrased everything really well. He had obviously fantastic insight after coaching G2, mm-hmm. but he was talking about all the other teams and saying, like, if you watch, say, if you're squishy here, he's going to, um, right, it's not left now. He's going to go get a boost and return back. And he literally didn't go up quickly, came back down, got boost, went back. And he just called everything perfectly. He just knows... That. The games, in and out. Um, it was so interesting. So Jarzo, another shout-out, I thought was a fantastic addition to the sofa whenever he was on there. That is the future of colour commentary. That real, real in-depth knowledge mm-hmm. of being able to just see the game, you know, so you can just see it in your mind. Somebody like, uh, you know, our, our go-to is Gregan, who yep. has that sort of insight, who can just see things that I cannot. And he's just like, he, he can sort of sense the game moving and shifting and understands all the players and... Stuff like that. I think that can be learned, but it takes hours and hours and hours of, of watching, watching script, not you know, watching highlights of games, mm-hmm. learning how each individual player plays, what their their quirks are. That's what I want to know 
from a colour commentator. I want to know, um, you know, who's most likely to step up here? Why is it that Astral looks the most likely? What is it about his play style mm-hmm. that's, making, uh, that's making Vitality struggle? They're the sort of real sort of nuggets of information that you can't just get by watching any one game. It's a very interesting thing that I don't think has been explored too much yet. I think there's many people that can do that. No. But more and more we go on and the more and more people get unlocked and they are being shown how good they are. I think it's just going to get better and better, which is why I hope Rocket League doesn't die. Because <laughs> there's still so yeah. much more that can be given um, yeah, just across is. the board. I don't think it's going to die. Uh, Epic have just bought it, don't forget. I don't think it's going yeah. to die. It's just... I don't know. I think I, don't know. I, do, I still think there'll be another resurgence. I do think there will be. I think so far we've I, had one resurgence. When was that? Season five? Yeah, just post season five. And then season six was a bit wet. And then season seven was a little bit wet as well. Um, <laughs> and I think the season eight, if there's any epic involvement, like, do we know if, if that, is that a milli again? Uh, a milli I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, well, I think they've said more than a million. I think the exact wording yeah, was, that was more it, yeah. than a million. So probably a million, yeah. Just a million. But then more. with maybe some like key stuff, maybe? Nah. Fair enough. <laughs> Epic didn't do that at Fortnite, did they? If it was Valve that had bought Psyonix, then... Well, I mean, even Valve. Only even then, Dota, CSGO. Isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Even, yeah. Imagine if that had a world's lull. That'd be good. That'd be hype. Yeah, that um, would be good. But yeah, no, it's like... I, I think RLCS will pretty much be the same thing, hopefully, in a, in a different region. Um... No offence, NA, but I think three in a row would be getting a little bit, a little bit EU, greedy. Mate. I know that you're not a greedy nation. <laughs> it will be EU. Mark my words, telling you now. EU. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think there's pressure on us, the, the crowd, the fans that are going to be there mm-hmm. to make it special. And we'll be there if it's exactly. EU. Yeah. The wording, by the way, is the best teams from Europe, North America, Oceania, and South America will compete for more than $1 million in prizing. Mm, that could be $1 billion. <laughs> or it could be one million and one dollar. Oh. One of the two, mate. One of the two. It always is. Somewhere between the twain. Is my exactly. Um, so, yeah, the Rocket League seemed to be pretty decent. I think it was a good <laughs> level. Um, I liked that there was uh, a single cam in each room, which it then cut to to then show the teams. Oh, um, thank God. Not certain the points, cams. that was nice. Oh, fuck individual cams. So you shit. hate them so much. They're so shit. It's such a waste of space. Why would I want to see a six foot fruity head get in the way of where the people are rotating in from? Like, don't get me wrong. I love seeing fruity's head, of course. but it doesn't need to be there while the Rocket League is going. Oh, mate, you've 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 got me. You've got me upset now. You've mentioned. You've even hinted at stupid individual player cams. So triple player cam, good compromise. Well done. I think the triple player cam is. I think it's good. I like it. I really like it. I think it works really well in CS as well, um, where yep. you can see the coach. It's going to be even better when you can now have the coach behind the teams. Oh, yes. Um, and then that triple cam going on and all the fist pumps and stuff. I think that'd be really, really good. But mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm. I, I just like being able to see the players as much as possible because you get to see really good reactions um, at any, basically at every point in the game. Unless it's literally just like a stalemate of ping-ponging. Um, <laughs> there's always like some kind of reaction going on. Um, but yeah, uh, I think we're just generally having coaches in Rocket League behind the teams. Oh, baby. And if teams don't have a coach, they won't be as good. And that's how which it should be. Uh, which, if anybody missed it, is uh, coming in in DreamHack Montreal, which is in two weeks' time. They'll have coaches behind them. So anything else in the Rocket League that's happened? So LG1, LG1 one, which is good. Thing. Yeah, really good. Turbo, he's cute, isn't he? He's funny. Turbo is like... The best player, like top three players in the world, like it's ridiculous how good he is. He made Randy Gibbons' River Rats good um, <laughs> in Valencia. He, he's just got that vision, isn't he? He's he, he is the ultimate jack of all trades. He's not flashy. No, he's, he's not. not. Like he doesn't do many. Every now and then, he does a creative player feeling confident, but he is so unbelievably solid in every single aspect of his game that. He basically becomes unstoppable. And this is NRG's first ever land win and the first ever tournament NRG have competed with Turbo in. Like, that's no coincidence. Are you up for the new, uh, the old era of, of NRG? Can't wait for their dynasty to start. The dynasty, the NRG dynasty. Is this that's another one, one that sounds nice. I hope so. I hope so. Rocket League needs one to show that there's more potential to be, to be found. Everything that they're doing now, all this whole, anyone can be anyone, needs to be 
put to sleep because suddenly everyone's catching up with NRG. I'm ready. I'm I mean, so the, ready for that. The first team, I don't have said it on a podcast yet, the first team to get a sports psychologist will win. Mm, probably. Like, a proper one in there. Yeah. The first team to really commit to the mental health of their players and the mentality of them, mm-hmm. they will mm-hmm. win lands. Completely no doubt. Because it's so important. Um, and it's just not looked at at the moment in Rocket League. It is in other esports. It is in CSGO. It is in Dota. I presume it is with like League and stuff as well. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, so it's one of those things where as soon as somebody does it, they will be winning all the lands, baby. <laughs> I don't think NRG need that, mate. They've got Turbo. We've got That's Turbo true. and Justin. What a combo. What a weird combo that is. And Garrett's just there. He's there too. But they've got Turbo and Justin. Is that everything then from BTS? There's no other news, is there? Um, Drippe went home, which is oh, sad and worrying that. again. Yeah, Drippe, Drippe, Drippe going home is quite upsetting. Like, man took a risk. Always respect him for that. It's not paid off. Hopefully, it is not the end of cross region stuff. Obviously, we now had Turbo do it as well. Turbo, yeah. So, as far it doesn't look like it's going to be the end of cross region plays happening. I think it was just very bold. Like, that's just a really, really big move, you know? It was. I, I, I fear for OCE. Rocket League more than mm. more than the rest because they've also lost Shady the Infinity Elite Series over there. Shady retired, lost the oh. Elite Series. What have they got? They've got a couple of orgs, a couple of proper orgs in Chiefs, um, Renegades. Chiefs and Renegades. If Renegades leave, then it's like, what now? Which I wouldn't... Would I be surprised at that? I don't think I would. I don't know. It depends how much money they get from making RLCS, how much that means to Renegades as an org. Because presu- presumably they will continue to make RLCSs. Yeah, I mean, they're, well, they're not going to be making a profit, are they? No, I don't think so. Regardless. Yeah, scary times. Um, scary times. Maybe, maybe maybe, what Rocket League needs is big, dumb, epic money, so there's no chance of the bubble popping because the bubble is epic. Maybe. And maybe. it all just exists in this weird vacuum and no one quite knows, but somehow Turbo's got four mansions, so everyone's happy. I think we should. Should we mention some bits of about what we're doing now, Carl? So yeah, let's do it. Because Rocket League's dying. The, think, yeah, going Rocket League's dead. Um, so things that we have unlocked because of our beautiful, amazing, fantastico subarones. Carl, what yeah. have we unlocked by getting to 300 subs on Twitch? Team Rocket. It's Rocket League casted sub games, the TRRLCS, the expertly named, even though if you actually dig down into, into it, it makes no sense, but TRRLCS sounds really cool. It's Basically clever. what we do is all our Twitch subs, they can enter the TRRLCS as individuals. And then uh, Stumpy Goblin and a guy called Dan MB, Hero. a mod of ours, they'll help each other uh, make teams that are theoretically fair. Mm-hmm. So if somebody enters who is 1700 MMR and someone enters who is 1000 MMR, we'd put those guys together in the theory that that would be a fair balance. Mm-hmm. So then we do that with every single team. We make as fair teams as possible. Everyone complains and says one team is overpowered. People Always. play anyway. Some P and I chuck 60 quid between us into the prize pool. Yep. Other people in the community add to that. I think we've hit a thousand pounds at least once, maybe twice. Yeah, like the winners have won like, I think 200 quid each or something like that. Not bad. Rid- ridiculous for an evening of Rocket League. Yeah, that is ridiculous. Um, and then uh, everyone has a good time. There was one where we got really drunk, and I accidentally said the wrong people had won and got them you into hated, the You hated. You didn't like that one, did you? Getting that drunk. I didn't like the high. I didn't watch the highlights, but I enjoyed it at the time. <laughs> I really liked it. That's probably my favourite one, no doubt. That is my favourite. <laughs> I was just smashed. It was very fun at the time. It was like drunk BTS. We weren't even talking about the game. We were just bullshitting, and somebody won. We didn't know how. And someone in chat was like, how have you not talked about that? We were like, oh, fuck off, you fuck. Fuck you know? off. Yeah, got That's a bit like drunk in comedy. It's it funny, bit. though. Yeah. I had a good time. Let's get drunk again, dude. All right. Okay, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, deal. Um, we are looking at dates at the moment, but we're thinking on a Saturday. So get yes. your weekends um, free. If you guys events. want to be uh, notified of the TRLCS, if you are a sub to us on uh, Twitch, then you'll be getting a sub email through, which will tell you the date and everything for that. We'll send one out. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, keep an eye on our Twitter, um, at subpar but in HD, and our Discord, discord.gg slash subpar but in HD. Um, and then we'll make sure, we're gonna, we'll spam it. Like, it will be very known when it is, how to enter, 
all that lovely stuff but get in both of those um regardless and otherwise we have another sub goal at 50 more subs so how many yeah. subs are we on now because we had a big old drop today didn't we because we didn't yeah we, we had lost... the audacity not to stream for about 10 minutes <laughs> we lost we lost 20 20 of those went away Harsh. but hopefully um when we when we go back live again it'll just be resubscriptions so we'll, we'll see uh, we're on 293 so we're about 53 of a 12 hour stream yeah. that's the life of twitch mate you put all these hours in to gaining 40 and then you you miss an hour you sleep. and suddenly you lose 15 but that is the game that we play that's literally what we left our jobs to do Hopefully, Epic will make it so that there's a couple more zeros on the end of people who regularly tune into Rocket League, because oh, that'd, be nice. that'd be nice. Mate, if we were as good at fucking League of Legends as we are at Rocket League, goodness me. Goodness good me. Yeah, we'd do all right for ourselves. Goodness me. Um, so yeah, we'll be uh, 350. Um, we're going to be doing a 12-hour stream. Um, be playing many a thing. Again, that's going to be on Discord. It's going to be on um, Twitter. It's going to be all over our Twitch, all those bits and bobs. Make sure you follow there. Otherwise, if you want to listen to any of the previous podcasts, go to Spotify. The link is in the YouTube description. Same with iTunes. It's in there as well. Um, so, yeah. Crazy. What a world, Cool Cole. What a world mm. we live in right now where all these things all right. are happening soon. We've done all right, mate. Subpar is doing well at the moment. Our Twitch community is very healthy, and I'm very mm. happy. Very, very, very happy about that. We're doing well. We're doing well. Keep it up. Good work, dude. Um, Everybody, thank you ever so much for listening to the Subpar Poddy C officially, unofficially, the best podcast on the internet. Um, If you want to catch up with the other ones, again, Spotify and iTunes. Otherwise, we'll see you all remarkably soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day, start of your day, end of your day, sleep, weekend, or bank holiday. Bye.